Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Church in Nantucket. Morning prayer, right to and after my opening sentences. Our hymn is hymn number 679 in your blue hymnal, 679. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord, and in every place incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering. My name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Hymn 79 of the Book of Common Prayer. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our psalm is chanted this morning. It's Psalm 65, page 672 of your prayer book.
reading from the book of Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow came down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come the cypress Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our canticle is canticle 15, the Song of Mary the Magnificat. It's on page 91 of your prayer book, and Anne and Jackie will chant this for us.
reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went out and sat by the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And Jesus told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. When the sun rose, they were scorched. Since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone, anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, that such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. When trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, another sixty, and another thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. our psalm today. Happy are they whom you choose, O God, and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. I love the uh, beginning of this gospel, where Jesus has this, the crowds are around him on the beach. Uh, so he had to go out into the, the bow of a boat um, and preach to the people from the boat. Don't you love that image? I just picture him here getting in a dory or something down at, at Steps Beach, you know, uh, where we have, bat have another baptism coming up this week, um, and then preaching to the crowds that wanted to listen to Jesus. Such a beautiful image. And of course, um, the parables, which were usually simple images that had a deeper meaning, Jesus would use these parables. Not to confuse people, but sometimes they're almost like stories for the insiders, people that would get it, people that had ears to listen. These, these explanations were, were for the disciples. Not everyone could appreciate them um, and comprehend what Jesus was talking about. But the followers of Jesus, uh, the parables uh, were more understandable. And again, it had a deeper meaning beyond the simple imagery. And as an amateur gardener, um, I always let images of the garden seeds that um, always interest me. And so this, you know, this parable talks about um, you know, since the founding of the church, since the early days when this gospel was written, uh, since the founding of the church on the day of Pentecost, all the way back there, that we've, we've struggled as a people with why do some people, when they hear the word of God, the gospels, the Hebrew scriptures, the old, what we call the Old Testament, other sacred books, when they experience the beauty of creation around us, all the things of life experience, love, even the respect of the of strangers and the, the love of, of, of neighbor, as we say, those we come in contact with, that still that wouldn't lead them to uh, faith. Um, we, that's, it's, it's such an interesting um, dilemma that we face. Is it us that we're not sharing the gospel well enough? Again, we don't want to proselytize and push our beliefs in anyone, but are we not living our life in a way that people would be inspired to be followers of Christ or to whatever their tradition is, to be more faithful in their tradition. I know a good friend of mine, an Islamic friend down in Delaware would say, our goal isn't make, to make you believe in Islam. Our goal would be you to be faithful in your own tradition. You know, that, you, that your tradition would lead to 
knowing that, that you're saved, knowing God's love, that you don't need our tradition to do that. Um, but, but God's speaking to all of us. And then some respond, right? Just a, some respond with enthusiasm. Sometimes it, we, things die off, the controversies in the church, things in our life happening, sadnesses where we might blame God uh, temporarily until we kind of get our act together, um, all of those things. And then we might think, well, it's wrong to think, I think that we're the chosen ones. It says, happier whom they whom you choose, O God, the psalm says, choose. Uh, you know, we're, we as a people in the Episcopal Church don't believe in election, you know, that we're elected to be the special ones. You know, we have, um, you know, friends of Jehovah Witnesses. We, we, we don't think we're, there's only a few select that would be raised up while God purifies the earth and then brought back down into, into paradise. That's how we feel. You know, we, we feel that God calls us all, and some of us um, respond. And of course, so many of our churches have been elitist, uh, judgmental, um, driven people away from Christ and from, from you know, experiencing God's love in your life. How sad. I love the image of um, Martin Smith when it comes to this. Um, you know, those that are faithful and you know, participate in their faith through worship as, as we do regularly. Uh, as a parish family, uh, remember you've heard me quote, Martin Smith says, we shouldn't think we're the, the special ones or the holy ones, the righteous ones, but that God is keeping us on a shorter leash. Hope that's not offensive to the, those, those dog, dog lovers. Uh, we don't find that offensive. I think, you know, God is pulling us closer to God. To Maybe, you know, God knows that we need that extra strength in our lives. We need that, that knowledge of God's love in our lives for healing uh, to do God's ministry more fully. Um, and so I love that image. And again, ultimately, uh, our faith is a gift from God. It's not because we've got it right in our minds intellectually. It's our experience of God in our lives, uh, which is a, a gift of God's grace. And so, in, and then finally in this, um, at the end of this parable, it talks about uh, that the harvest will be bountiful. You know, Matthew even uses this exaggerated amount, you know, you know, 10, 15 times, if it's 100 full, 10, 15 times more than you'd get from, from seed usually, uh, that kind of bountiful harvest. That in spite of the stuff of the world, we might lament now, you know, as, as we, so we do at every committee of on, you know, why don't we have more young families involved? Why, where are the children? Um, it, it, again, it's sad that the children would, would know our tradition passed on from their families but we don't give up with that because we know ultimately um, God will be victorious and that the, that the harvest will be bountiful, that there will be abundance of life. And then something hit me last night, and, you know, sometimes I'm, and I can feel that way too. Uh, I used to have some funerals down in Delaware where I knew that, um, that people were from the Christian tradition, but they didn't, these are adults and older than me, but they didn't know the Our Father, they didn't participate when they came to a funeral, they kind of just sat there like a lump. <laughs> and I, I used to criticize, I'd say, you know, Ali, I feel like I'm in a, a godless community. Isn't that terrible? I feel like there's a godless culture. That's so judgmental on my part. Uh, but then the other night, you know, Ali and I, if you haven't tuned in, Ali and I have prayers from the attic. Uh, Joe has a wonderful music Monday. You'll have tomorrow evening at 8.30. Um, and then we have prayers from the attic the other weekdays. We used to have them the other six days of the week, now dialed back a little bit for the holidays, uh, for the you know holiday season here in July. And so Ali and I the other night we you know, we were running out of hymns that we know, but we, but I found this evening hymn that somehow um, we recognized it from, I guess from evening even songs that we've been involved with. And it's it's hymn number twenty four. If you want to look at it later, it's a, you know you'd recognize the hymn. It, the day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. So it's a, it's a very pretty image. It's called uh, St. Clement. But here's the, the second and third verse I just wanted to point out. It says, We thank thee that the, thy church unsleeping, while earth rolls onward into light, through all the world her watch is keeping, and rest not now by day or night, as o'er each continent an island of that, as o'er each continent an island, 
the dawn leads on another day. The voice of prayer is never silent, nor dies the strain of praise away. So as we're sleeping, I, it's such a comforting image, isn't it? Um, I thought about that the other night. As we're um, going to sleep, our friends on the West Coast, we have friends in the Palm, Palm Desert dialing in to prayers from the attic. They'd continue in their prayerful evening. Our friends that live in Maui, uh, as, a, as the sun moved across the world, they'd be praying. Our, our friends from seminary are in Australia, um, New Zealand, as it went around the world, people would be keeping their watch, right? So keeping watch like we're out on the ocean sailing, um, and we have to keep our our four hours of watch, or whatever it might be, uh, while others are resting. Isn't that a beautiful image of the church never sleeping? Right? As we struggle to reach young families, as we say, and how can we get the word out more effectively and share God's love more effectively? We ask here at St. Paul's, how can we serve more effectively so that God's love would be more widely known? That the church is keeping its visil, vigil around the world, the church never sleeping. It's such a, a wonderful image. And then, um, finally, uh, last night I had a, a, a late call with um, a dear friend and summer parishioner up in the city. And uh, she was saying, you know, if I could just get out more t to the beach, if I could get out t to nature some, you know, once or twice a week, if I could get outside um, and be in nature a little more, it would be more healing for me. I, I feel uh, so much more centered and, and healed. Um, it isn't that true for all of us, you know, that we, just, just a little bit of time out of nature, it's hard enough for all of us, some of us homebound, we cannot do it, we maybe could at least look out the window, my mother likes to look out at the water as much as she can see now and watch the sunsets, you know, from her view, um, appreciate the birds flying by, um, those kind of things, and our, 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 the song, the, the beautiful passage from Isaiah that, that Curtis read in our psalm, uh, that was so beautifully chanted. Uh, these songs of gladness, you know, uh, remind us that that all of creation is is infused with God. Not just our souls, as we say in, the, in, in Christian tradition. All of the world infused with God's creation, glorifying God. As we say that our that our the Magnificat. Um, let my soul proclaim the greatness of the Lord, right? My soul will magnify the Lord, proclaim, proclaim the greatness, the glory of the Lord. And that nature does that so beautifully too, right? So I'm reminded of St. Francis, the Canticle of the Sun. Of course, my, my source is um, Marvel comic, comic book, St. Francis, Brother of the Universe, where it talks about Brother Sun, Sister Moon, the waters, all of it honoring God, revealing the glory of God. Shouldn't we uh, appreciate that more? I think maybe we'd treat, treat nature differently. I'm so in awe of the miracle of God and, and creation. Just being down at, at the beach uh, yesterday evening with uh, Meatball and Ollie, being in the water, just experiencing the serenity of the, of, the, of the salt air of nature around me. This one final, this one funny image, a miracle of life. Our neighbors have um, artificial flowers in their window boxes. You know, well, very colorful. You can tell they're artificial. They look like they're from another planet, the colors. And, uh, but then underneath those artificial flowers have sprung up um, wave petunias, an abundance of wave petunias. And I said, it's a miracle that the seeds from these plastic flowers <laughs> have dropped right below them. All these beautiful, real petunias growing out of the cracks in the sidewalk, out of the foundation of the house next door. And it's that miracle of life and those little things like that that just um, set my heart on fire. And so wouldn't, um, let's, let's enjoy, appreciate creation, be healed by creation, protect creation uh, for those that come after us, um, which we haven't been, not been good at doing. And, uh, and again, we know, we trust that that harvest is plentiful. There's a, an abundance in the harvest. Um, some of it we just have to get out of the way, and let God do God's work. Um, and we trust in that, that's God's promise. Um, in the church around the world, keeping its vigil of worship and prayer and service, servanthood, um, 24 hours a day, and um, that's something to hold on to. And the Father and the Holy Spirit.
Amen. The Apostles' Creed is on page 96 of the prayer book, 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The suffrages A are found on page 97 in the prayer book. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who this reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And O Heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation we may learn to serve you with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And almighty and everlasting God, by whose Holy Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your Holy Church in their, in their vocation and ministry may truly and devoutly serve you our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think our hymn now is hymn number 530, is that correct? 530 of your blue hymnal.
before our intercessions, just a couple of announcements. I want to thank everyone for their support of St. Paul's unfair. Uh, remember, we've had the summer fair since 1903. It was unfair that we could not have it this year because of the pandemic, which was certainly the right decision that was made early on. Um, and we thank Sharon Robinson and her, her husband, Frank, who helped organize things. But Sharon chaired and put it all together are unfair and it was such a great success. And then you heard the other, the other night we had Joe, the um, Queen of Terry Hope was such an interesting and fabulous song that he did. Um, Ann and Jackie, we had Macy with us. Andrew uh, was just such a, and Libby Tracy, of course, in her lobster suit. What a fabulous evening it was for our variety show. If you haven't seen that, that's been recorded. It's on YouTube, it's on Facebook. You really need to see that one. Just, just fabulous. We had such a great response to that. And so thank you. It was a very successful fundraiser for, for a non-event. And again, we had 177 meals went out. Our mission committee, who's organized and, and feeding people anyways from their work with the Community Foundation for Nantucket, um, they, their emergency relief fund this summer, that they, we organized that. We brought curbside. We were able to chat with people. And also many uh, delivered to people's homes lobster or chicken dinners. It's just an amazing success. So thank you everyone and thank you especially for Sharon and for Frank and for the mission committee for helping to make that happen and our wonderful musicians. Joe really put together a great show. So I want to leaving people out. And Glidden's of course so for supplying that chef, chef Zach from Glidden's did a beautiful job. So we, we thank God for that. And then I hope people will join us for this when, coming Wednesday uh, that program that St. Barnabas on the Cape invited us to, which is just four evenings um, discussing the letter, letter from Birmingham Jail from Martin Luther King Jr. So I hope you join me as we, you know, we try to deal with some of the chaos and some of the racism in our, in our culture, that maybe we could come together. So I, I signed up for that. Please uh, let me know if you can join me for that, uh, for even any of the evenings, if you can't do all four Wednesday evenings uh, in a row. If you look at last week's uh, email information about that, our, our email, parish email blast for that information. So, uh, so we thank God. And also, I want to thank God for all the many contributions to the unfair. Thank you for your generosity. All things come of thee, O Lord. Of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. So our prayers of intercessions and thanksgivings, we continue to pray for Jean and her husband Bill, and for their family. We pray for Patsy right today on her birthday. Happy birthday, Patsy. We pray for those that are sick from the, our parish, those that are homebound, our loved ones in assisted living facilities, independent living facilities that had to be on lockdown still. All those feeling isolated, struggling with mental health issues during this time, as all of us are. We ask God to continue to comfort us, to reveal God's presence with us in many ways. Pray for our homeless neighbors and those that strive for economic justice in our land. And we ask God's help as we become better stewards of God's creation. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you made us one with your saints in heaven and your saints on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, who lives and reigns, forever and ever. Amen. Now our general thanksgiving is on page 101. Let us pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. 
and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let's continue together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Today's worship is over, but let us continue our service here on Nantucket and throughout the world. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Bless you. See you tomorrow evening at 8.30 for Music Monday. Joe, what do you have for us tomorrow night? You know yet? We're going to, <laughs> exactly. We're going to concentrate on uh, one, um, one hymn, actually. Uh, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Lobden Herren is the German name for the tune. And we're just going to kind of take a deep dive. Great. That sounds great. Thank you. Okay, so I'll see you then. Have a blessed day. Love you.